Hi there, my name's Ian. I'm a PhD student at Sheffield Hallam University. Um, I'm in the wonderful position of just having submitted the first full draft of my thesis, which has just given me a little bit of breathing space. But it was in making that submission that I, I realised some of the features that I've been using in Microsoft Word uh, in order to enable me to compose uh, my thesis and how useful some of those features might be for people in general. The reason I'm making that comment is that um, some of my fellow PhD students and friends who've already submitted and are in front of me and in some cases have even got the doctorate by now um, have remarked how useful they found some of the tips that I was able to help them with when they were looking for a little bit of assistance. I used to be an e-learning manager in a school so I've spent a lot of time helping staff in their use of Word in their various different ways. Not so often in terms of long documents like the thesis will be, but that's where I think Word comes in. Um, when you're using, when you're producing a very long document, um, there are lots of features that you wouldn't normally use, perhaps aren't aware of, that can really help you with the work that you do, make it more efficient and speed things up. Um, Word's not the only um, word processing application that you could use. Open, uh, Open Office, uh, LibreOffice, Google Docs even, they've all got similar features. Uh, but I think Word is reasonably powerful. I can't speak about the Mac because I have no experience with Macintosh platform, I'm afraid. So what I thought I would do is produce a, a few short videos which outline some of those features. Um, there may be things in there that you're already aware of, but I'm pretty sure there'll be one or two things that you perhaps weren't and that might be able to help you. So we'll get underway. First of all, can I apologise for this rather um, crude titling sequence? Um, I'm just trying to get this done in a single take to save all the hassle of video editing later. I know how time consuming that can be and I'm not, I don't have quite that amount of time. So we'll go for one take and see how it works out. Okay then, as it says in this title page, um, the first thing I'd like to talk about are views in navigation. That might seem like an obvious topic, it's one that you're fully aware of, but let's take a look at one or two features and see whether I can introduce you to one or two new things. We're going to start uh, down here at the uh, status bar. I'm using Word 2013 here. You may be using that. I know that in our university we only use Word 2010. Most of the features are still the same. Uh, they may look a little bit different. There was a sort of facelift when they went, uh, when Microsoft went up to Word 2013. So the look and feel might be different, but the features should be the same. The status bar certainly is. And you'll be familiar with certain parts of it. So you're probably aware that there's a page number down in the bottom left hand corner, a word count, and the language of the dictionary that you're using. Over on the right hand side of the status bar, is the zoom uh, value at the moment and the slider so you can change the view, uh, change the zoom level. But did you know that if you right click on the status bar, it opens a context sensitive menu. So this is all related to what is visible on the status bar. Those things which are ticked are visible. They may not be apparent because like, for example, signatures is turned off at the moment, but nevertheless, all of these things which are ticked can be visible. Uh, the word count is particularly useful, obviously, if you're doing a thesis. Um, that's a little bit higher than I would like at the moment. I've clearly got a bit of um, thinning out to do. Uh, I've started adding some appendices, so I'll, they're adding to the word count, though. <laughs> yes, that's got to come down a bit. Um, the line number is ticked here, uh, but perhaps not visible or apparent on the status bar. I'll come back to that in a second. That can be useful if you're discussing with your supervisors um, the paragraph that begins at line such and such. Uh, page number clearly is visible. Um, sections, not ticked here yet, but I will be ticking that when I come later on. If you are, for example, wanting to put in some graphics or tables 
where you need a landscape page and then later in the thesis flip back to standard portrait then you would probably break that up using sections and here you can see which section you're on if you have that ticked formatted page number that's um, you'll be aware that in the thesis the page numbering often starts proper when the thesis itself opens the admin bits that come before are often required to be uh, numbered in Roman numerals for example well the, all those pages contribute to the thesis but that numbering changes between the number of pages in the whole thesis and the number of pages which have been formally numbered I've not numbered any yet in my document so it's there's no point in me showing that okay so that's the status bar and that's some of the information that you can use to help you appreciate where you are within the thesis You'll notice that I've got the View tab selected. This is particularly useful. It's a place that folks don't often go. But you'll notice that at the moment, Print Layout View is shown. That's the standard. It's often the default setting. If you go to Read Mode, that can be useful if you want to be able to um, perhaps show your thesis up on a, a large screen projector while you're discussing it with your supervisors. It just gets rid of all the bits around the edge and allows you to navigate through it more easily. So you can scroll through it like that. You can see now <coughs> excuse me, that I've inserted a table of contents. I'll come back in a later video to explain how they work. Um, but we'll just escape out of that. You've got the idea of that view. Web layout view is probably not going to be appropriate. Um, you're unlikely to be posting it in the form of a website, although you may, of course, post it to the internet. And there are better ways of doing it if you want your thesis as a website. But the outline view is useful. So let's click on that. And what you can now see is it's got rid of a lot of the text. And depending on how you've got it displayed, um, the diagrams and charts, for example, aren't visible. This is a way just to outline the text. And if we change the levels, so at the moment um, all levels are shown, but if I just go to level two, all that you see now are the titles of each of the chapters, or in some cases sections. And that makes it a lot easier to be able to navigate quickly through from one part to another within the document, should you choose to do so. It's also really useful if you want to reorder massive chunks of your thesis. So rather than <coughs> excuse me, copying, cutting, pasting from one section to another where you can sometimes lose things. Um, let's say, for example, I want this chapter. These are still notional chapter headings at the moment. Uh, these are some of the findings. And let's say I decide that I actually want that one to come first. I could cut and paste it all or I can simply click there and then I can move using this arrow button. It's in front of the other one. <coughs> Excuse me. That's now reordered that whole chapter and placed it somewhere else within the thesis. Really quick to do that. So that's something different within the outline. We'll just shift that back so that uh, I keep the order. Um, there are other features within here. You're probably not going to get onto them. So that, that's the outline view. That's useful. Um, what else? Yeah, let's go back to the view menu. Zoom in. Well, you can do that down in the bottom right hand corner from the status bar, but you can also do it within here. The 100% button is particularly useful. If you do zoom to a different level, clicking that will instantly bring you back. Uh, one feature that I find really useful is choosing in here the many pages option. Let's, let's see what that does. It'll take a second or two, because as you can see, there's about 250 pages within here. But what that produces is thumbnail views of virtually the whole thesis for you to be able to scroll through. Let's say you were trying to find a particular diagram or chart. You weren't sure what page it was on. By producing this view, you can instantly see it and therefore get to it really quickly. So let's say that was the graphic that I was trying to find. If I put the cursor on that page, and then I go zoom 100%, that immediately takes me to that graphic and that page. So that's a really useful way of jumping to somewhere when you're not sure. So that's using the um, zoom feature and zooming to many pages. Uh, so let's 
just do that again click OK give it a moment or two to actually work it all out because it's got a pretty use a thumbnail for 250 pages when it's done that there we are I can instantly get back to somewhere else within the thesis really quickly and go back to zoom 100% and then now back at that page um, well, we can see here that it's on uh, a two page view at the moment so multiple pages depends on your monitor how many pages are actually visible at any particular time I've got a widescreen monitor here so we can see three pages at once using that particular zoom if I go back to 100% and go back to single page that's the view that we would more commonly associate 100% there we go um, and what this, let's think yeah whilst we're on the view menu there's another option that can be really useful here if you create a new window it will look as though not much has happened but if you look at the name of the document up here you can see that it's become numbered document 2 if I now go to the view menu and click arrange all then we can see we've got two versions that one says number one that one says number two two versions of the same document side by side well one above the other I guess that's the point that can be useful if I scroll down here that one scrolls and I can navigate to a different place in the document whilst maintaining what a different view in the top half that doesn't suit me particularly because it's not a really good use of screen real estate so perhaps a better way is to arrange them side by side if we do it that way we can now see we've got on one side one document and another version of it on the other side um, at the moment they're scrolling synchronously one scrolls with the other but if I uncheck that that one will now scroll independently so for example if I was trying to sort out um, one particular section and I know where it is from within the table of contents I've navigated it to it over here I can then adjust that particular section maybe it's the title just the heading that I want to change and I can get that done from in here so having the two views side by side can be really useful it's also useful if you have two separate documents one earlier than the other perhaps one in which you've made some corrections and having them arranged side by side and you can make a direct comparison with the two sections the, the previous version and the new version and see where the changes are that you've made so um, having two windows side by side really useful so I'm going to close the second version of that go back to the first version and maximize it um, we we're talking about table of contents the this is a <coughs> excuse me a really helpful way to navigate because it's um, interactive so if I click within it if I now hover over a particular page number it tells me that I can control click and I can go straight to that page and instantly that's a really quick way to get through your document it's like hyperlinks in a web page now let's say I've not found the section I was after and I need to go back to the table of contents I could of course scroll using the scroll bar on the right hand side but like web pages if you use the alt and the back pointing arrow key that instantly takes you back to the last view you were on it works for web pages alt and um, backwards pointing arrow key shifts you back to the last page and it's the same here so that's helpful we've not looked yet at how to get tables of contents but there is one other feature that's useful which looks very similar but will work in a different way if you put a table of contents in then that's often be just to help the, um, the person who's reading the thesis when it's in printed form it's so not often they get the chance to use the document itself your supervisors and your examiners will of course need to do that so for them to be able to skip through it quickly if you go to um, view and navigation pane you get a similar version over here on the left hand side and he, these are all the headers but now you can click backwards and forwards from one section to another really really quickly um, you can also collapse them and expand them later on so to make more or less available that's pretty much it for this first video in the next one we'll take a look at another topic